In this video, I'm going to be rating the top 10 racing simulators from worst to best, along with my justification for those choices. Fanboys, prepare to get yourselves triggered, but for everyone else that's nice and calm, make yourself a cup of tea and let's get ready for some Mary Kondo Sim organization. If you enjoy our content and want to support the channel, use the Gamer Muscle Fanatec store link when buying fancy pants sim racing equipment. Link is in the description. Thank you very much for all the tea bags. Okay, trigger warning for the fanboys. Here we go. <laughs> I can't wait for the hate comments underneath this video. So, the worst. I've already got it selected. <laughs> the worst of all of the all of the popular sims at the moment in number 10, uh, F1 2020. Now, you know, that was a snap call, snap decision. Um, as, even though it is 10th, even though it is the worst, in fairness to F1 2020, it does have a single player, which is actually something you can play through. A little bit of gameplay there. The AI is not too bad in it. The tracks are absolutely fantastic. Graphics look quite nice. And if you're on games console, you do probably have some of the best Formula One cars that you can play on a games console in, in a game. And it's got licensed stuff. You can have fun with it. Online's a total mess. Um, yes, I, I just don't... It's not very realistic. It has some problems. I'm mostly just, I'm mostly just annoyed with uh, Codemasters or should we say EA Codemasters now, in the F1 2020 could just be so... It could be way better than what it is, but it isn't. Hopefully, they'll move forward into the future and produce a cracking F1 game like the earlier EA Formula 1 games. It's not awful. It's made the top 10. As I say, everything in this list I would recommend owning if you're a Sim fan, but F1 2020 <laughs> go to 10th place. 9th place now. Uh, this is where it gets tricky, so... We're getting into decision, hard decision time. So, ah, uh, oh man, what do we put in ninth? I'm hovering over Automobilista. Ah, uh, maybe Autom... Like, okay. Okay, maybe Automobilista. Not because it's bad. It has some really good cars in it. But Automobilista is dated. Um, R-Factor 1 based game, engine. G-Motor based. But, but really well, really well made cars. Really nice handling, really fun to drive, really good single player. Really, it shouldn't go in night, should it? Because it's actually really quite fun to drive, really good. But it is dated. The user interface makes me want to put my face in a blender and then microwave it and then put it back in the blender. So maybe maybe eighth. Ninth, I'm going to move it to eighth. If you just if we were just talking about raw handling, it's, go, it's going up there. And raw force feedback, especially with the DD wheel, it's going up there. But... Overall, taking everything into account, let's let's just let's just move it to eighth. We'll move on. <laughs> we might have to come back to that. Um, where do we go? It. Let, what do we drag across next? Oh God, everything's controversial. Live for speed. Let's let's take a look at live for speed. Um, absolutely amazing. A little bit dated now. Live for speed. Um, but an amazing simulator. Fantastic in VR. If you haven't got a fast computer, and fantastic in VR either way. AI is a bit funny. But then the drifting and the car handling and the fantasy tracks in this are absolutely amazing. And Lift for Speed for me uh, was like the first online, uh, the user interface and the online setup sharing. Absolutely amazing. Lift for Speed for me, um, I owe a lot to Lift for Speed. This is what got me really hooked into more realistic simulators. So, sort of the physics and tyre model is up the top, it's, it's up there for like the raw handling mechanics. But then again, it's, it doesn't see that much development. It's all fantasy tracks. Um, oh, God. <laughs> I want, Part of me would put it in the top three for many of the things. I'm going to leave it at sixth for now. If a new Lift for Speed came out with a slightly better graphics engine and some other stuff and mods and things, I'd probably put it higher. I'm going to put it in sixth. Sorry, Lift for Speed. I, I owe a lot to Lift for Speed. I do really like it. Um, let's go. Let's let's, try, let's GT Sport. Let's let's deal with you, Sonny boy. Um, where do we put GT Sport? Oh God. Okay. So, right. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get hated for this, but on the console side, GT Sport is it. And also on a practical, just jump in and race online 
great race craft, great structure, user interface. I really like the music in GT Sport and just Japanese-iness and getting those golden disco balls. GT Sport's really good for that. Also, le get learning the track layouts through its system is really good. The fact that you can get a PlayStation 4 for like 100 quid and just slap a wheel on it, although I will say this is pretty terrible with the G293, uh, 289 or what have you. It's good with the T300, CSL, Elite and DD, but... Um, yeah, force feedback's a bit weird with GT Sport. It's workable, though. GT Sport's on console it is easily the best simulator on console or realistic driving game, you know. So, uh, especially when you factor in everything. The online system on this, the ranked online and quick sprint racing th thing is fantastic. A lot better than what you get in a lot of the PC sims. But the physics are really quite mushy, and it's a bit weird with the physics. But it's fun. It's fun to drive. It's not. It's it's not not fun, and it's not that irritating unless you're trying to do really serious hot lapping. It's a hard one. I'm, I'm gonna. Oh god. Oh, I can't put it above lift for speed. Ah, oh, right. I'm putting it in seventh for now. GT Sport's really good on console. If you're on console, you should have GT Sport. It's practically free. Um, I'm gonna leave that in seventh. This is gonna get really. I'm, we we are still gonna do some shuffling. We <laughs> we will do some shuffling. Uh, and some adjustment. Uh, race room, racing experience. Okay, really great. Another G motor based game like Automobilista. They've done a lot. Uh, Sector three have done a lot of physics development on this, um, but uh, uh, oh, it runs nicely. You can play it in VR as well. The DLC compartmentalization of everything. Now you buy it in the user interface, um, which they're actually in the them replacing the user interface for a new ones. So this is going to change. But the user interface, the user experience of it is a bit rubbish. But then the driving, the force feedback, and the new ranked servers actually make it really quite fun to play. Um, really good car contact collisions. Pretty good AI as well if you do single player racing. So I want to put it quite high. I really like Race Room. It's a weird sim, but it is actually quite good. It's mostly just the DLC and the structure aspect of it that's annoying. Sounds are really good in Race Room as well. I'm going to leave it in fourth. <laughs> Let's do... Oh, uh, what do we do next? <laughs> this, these, we've left the... Uh, these are like... The, we're getting these up there, these sims. They're up there and they're not in other ways. Let's do... Let's do Automobilista 2. Now, this is a weird one because Automobilista 2 was meant to be the best game of 2019. <laughs> it didn't come out in 2019. So that never happened. Um... For those of you who don't know, Automobilista 2 is using the Madness engine, and it's very much like, imagine Project Cars 2, but imagine a developer that's going to spend a lot of time on doing cars and adding features uh, took over Project Cars 2, and then they're Brazilian, so it's got crazy Brazilian stuff in it. It's a hard one to place this, because I really like aspects of the structure of this. The way you can host your own sessions, invite friends in, do AI racing and stuff. The AI race is actually pretty good with this now. And the VR is really good in Automobilista 2. Really good frame rates. The weather system, day, night, uh, runs really well whilst looking great. It's got a lot of features set there, but it's very much still in development. So there's cars in this that are absolutely terrible, uh, awful. And I think, it, from my opinion, I, AMS2 fans are going to disagree with me with this, but at the moment, from my experience, any car that has an, a, a, diff, a controllable diff settings in it doesn't have proper lift-off oversteer, which is kind of fundamental to driving. Um, the MCR 2000 in this, though, is a really fun car to drive. All the cars in Automobilista 2 are a bit slidey and sloppy, though, in my opinion, for my for my uh, critic, crit, crit taste. But it's a nice package, and it's developing, and it's developing really fast, and they're doing lots of work to it. So I've... <sighs> I'm going to leave it in fifth for now. I'm, I'm leaving it in fifth for now, okay? That's for that for now. Right. iRacing. Let's go for the iRacing. This is the iRacing has some of the most uh, mental fan uh, fan boys and fan girls. Uh, mostly, if you drive it with an incorrect steering rotation, it seems to really upset iRacers, but not other sim racers. So I don't know what that's about. Um, iRacing. Now, this is problematic because iRacing... If you use IRFFB, the force feedback, I think, is actually all right and reasonable, and the handling is reasonable, quite good fun with, with some of the cars in it. It's probably like four or five cars that I think are actually quite good. They're, they're, they're more than fun to drive, regardless of realism. Great fun to drive. Track's absolutely fantastic. The, on, this, the online system is the best of all the simulators in terms of 
you go, you can do a race any time of the day, as long as it's in a popular car. Radical SR3, Radicals are the best cars, so that's always good. Not SR3, R R SR8 or RX8. Uh, the Skippy um, and Oval Racing. This is the best racing sim for Oval Racing. You c that's it. If you're doing Oval Racing online, iRacing's it. And, the you know, the, the ranking and stuff's really good, so... But then the bad cars in it are absolutely atrocious. I mean, I don't need, it's like worse than F1 2020, arguably. Um, you know, worse than GT Sport, arguably, in a sense, uh, because the cars are just, some of them are mental, fish falling off the wall. But the online system, and then the price of it, and the fact that it's, it, it's subscription, plus you have to buy content, which is absurd. They don't even do that with World of Warcraft. So, um it's going to be in the top three. I have reservations to iRacing. It's in some ways, it's amazing. In some ways, it's actually worse. I'm going to put it third for now. We're just dropping it there. Uh, let's do R Factor 2 next because uh, R Factor 2 is interesting. Again, R Factor 2, basically, aspects... Some, so R Factor 2 is really weird in that it's very, very car-specific. So some cars in R Factor 2 are... God awful, a bit like I racing. Some are really nice, and of the really nice cars, the force feedback is really, really nice, really detailed, like overly detailed, a bit over the top in some ways. But then that means you can tone it down on your steering wheel if you're using a DD wheel. Uh, if it's over the top, you know, it's better to have too much to reduce than having not enough that you can't increase because you can't invent information to force feedback. Um, but then they've just added a ranking thing to it. Development is like glacially slow on R Factor Two. Game development is complicated. It takes a long time. It's hard, um, but you know this has been. This is like came out in 2010, and it's uh, this swap developer and loads of stuffs happened. In the last two years, a lot has happened to it to improve it. But I have to say that and they've just added a ranking system. It does have VR. It does run quite nicely, but I always find it just a pain in the ass when I load it up. So and. <sighs> I want to like R Factor 2. I really like the force feedback and stuff, but then uh, I'm going to put it in fourth place for now. It's a weird one because, again, it's so all over the place. Um, aspects of it are fantastic. Aspects of it absolutely terrible. From an end user's perspective, it's awful. <laughs> but if you can overlook that and get into it, you can have some really, really, really compelling racing. Like, oh, I feel like I'm in a car for real driving. It's a hard one. It's a hard one to place. This is going to get awkward because we've got a knife down here. We might have to do some more shuffling. Um, Assetto Corsa. The original Assetto Corsa. There we go. Decision made. <laughs> Not a fanboy. Uh, rigged. Rigged. <laughs> Guys, I mean, it speaks for Assetto Corsa, right? Amazing force feedback. Amazing, uh, amazing track. Graphics, fantastic. Runs great. VR, fantastic. Const just mods. Whatever mod you want. You could say that's a downside, you, you, you know, in that you, if you get it now, the complete edition, you do really want to get some mods onto it. But you could play it out of the box. The out of the box version is good. I would dock some points for the console version of the original Assetto Corsa. That's pretty crappy because you really want the mods. But, you know, you get Assetto Corsa, you get Content Manager, get a few tracks and a few cars. Sim Racing System, which is like a free eye racing, for like 10 quid. You are set with a set of course. You can just play a set. You can just have a set of course, and you're done with sim racing. Is and that the overall physics with all the cars is the best. It's the best by far. No, no, <laughs> no debate there. Online structure is better in iRacing, racing, but in totality, a set of course is absolutely the best. That's it. That's the end of that. No arguments in the comments section. And then we've got a set of courses. Um, Diseased brother, <laughs> Assetto Corsa Competition, otherwise known as Hello, we've made the best game ever. Let's make something in a real engine so we can sell the company and move. Uh, we'd have a, a better cross platform uh, title. Um, Assetto Corsa Competition has the best sounds of any of the simulators. The netcode is fantastic and it is GT3. And if you like GT3, and it's got GT4, but no one drives it online despite them being better than the GT3 cars in terms of fun. <laughs> but a set of co course competition is fantastic. Um, but where do we place it? Uh, okay, I'm going to move all of these down. The thing is, as you guys know, <laughs> if you watch this channel, I really don't like the force feedback in the set of course competition. It's workable. It's, it's, it's okay. Like, if you, if you play with a... 
T300, G25, or whatever, and you're not, you know, not that picky with force feedback, or, or you just like a really strong left and right force feedback for the real of the car or suspension force feedback, great. But if you want to feel like seat of the pants and you want the sense of the mass of the vehicle in subtle ways, the force feedback is absolutely atrocious in Assetto Corsa Competition. Nowhere near as good as the force feedback, even in iRacing with II FFB um, or Assetto Corsa or R, R Factor 2 or Race Room. Uh, I like force feedback's important to me. You know, you spend a lot of money on a force feedback wheel. It, well, unless you're like a, a you know an idiot YouTuber that gets sent stuff for free. But you know, I used to have to spend a lot of money on force feedback wheels. So I understand. You know, I appreciate games with really good force feedback. Live for Speed, original Assetto Corsa, Race Room, Automobilista. What was he doing with the? Why is this? Why is ACC got such terrible force feedback? But for what it is, it is. It's good value. The DLC that's just come out, the Brick Pack DLC, Alton Park, Donington. The if you've got a really fast computer, it does look it, it, it kind of look really nice. The light is really nice, and it's actually very polished. The user interface could be a little bit better, but it's quite a nice user experience. Now they've added a server filter to it, so I kind of want to put it up there. I would say it's so hard to like actually totally list these out because there's as i say the components of them apart from a set of corsa which is godly the holy grail we oh it's right here we go we, we've got to nail this down we can't keep going on for too long <laughs> right oh god automobile listed twos above live for speed that seems wrong I, uh, I mean this is pretty much the order that I've got these in, in terms of what I tend to play, the, what I play the most. Maybe that's the fairest way of doing it. What do I spend my most time playing? Assetto Corsa, then iRacing for the online rank, uh, rating, and uh, iRacing and ACC I tend to play sort of equally. Race Room I then play a lot of. R Factor 2 I occasionally load. I do play Automobilista 2 more than R Factor 2, but I would say if you overlook the annoyingness of using R Factor 2, it's better than Automobilista 2, if we're being totally honest. I mean, if we're being totally honest, Live for Speed is better than Automobilista 2. But no one plays Live for Speed anymore. I, I'm being gracious to Automobilista 2 because I think it's I think it's gradually getting there. And there, there's bits to it that I, I really like. GT Sport, if you're on console, is first. But we're not. We've got PCs. I, uh, you know, we're dirty PC gamers. Uh, it, you should get a PC, guys, if you haven't got one. Automobilista 1. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is it. I think this is the list. I feel bad having iRacing in second. I think this is it. I think we're, oh, we're going to lock it in. <laughs> we're locking it in. Oh, God. Oh, God, I feel... Oh, I right, well, we're locking it in. Okay, that's my... We're going for the excuse here. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, before I get murdered by people, I, as I say, I definitely think... Maybe not Automobilista 1 now because it's getting a bit dated. But actually, no. All of these games are worth they're worth having and playing especially that i'd say the top yeah no the top they're, they're all worth you should own them definitely a set of course uh, i racing it's a cost thing you could totally not play i racing you could totally play the original set of Corsa and not need to play i racing unless you do oval racing um and the set of course a competition you could you know you, you could sort of fill in the gap of one of these sims if you didn't want to do it. The reason why I would say to not do iRacing is just the cost of it is so much. It's kind of unfair to put them in these categories with these because for a value for money perspective, iRacing's like literally five, five, ten times the price of some of these games, maybe even more. But uh, yeah, you know, so you all these games are definitely worth owning. A set of course I've got tons of time on. iRacing I've got tons of time on. Set, a set of course competition I've got quite a bit of time on now. Uh, race room, really good fun. You can try all the cars out for free in race room. R Factor 2, I think it's progressing. It'll be interesting to see where it moves around. If you do league racing and esports stuff, R Factor 2 is definitely one to look out for. Um, and uh, there's lots of competitions taking place in R Factor 2. So if you're an esports player, R Factor 2 might be in uh, a more interesting one. Some of the. Stay on the wall, fish. <laughs> uh, yeah. Automobilista 2 is moving around. I mean, that. Do you know what? I'm going to put it below Live for Speed. I've done it. Because I, I, Live for Speed has just means so much to me historically. The setup sharing, the user interface, SO City, Chicane Route, in the Fox car, BLG, ah, oh, dreamy, guys. We're going to have to do a Live for Speed stream. <laughs> so good, Live for Speed. And the autocross mode. 
I mean, AC and Live for Speed are still by far the best uh, sims for drifting and autocross. Like that, that holding car at slip angles at different speeds. Uh, maybe, maybe some of the cars in Automobilista specifically, but pretty much everything in Live for Speed and Assetto Corsa handle like cars. Uh, more so, I think, than the other simulators in many ways. There's something about the, the uh, tire model with programming. I don't know. The g genius programming behind Live for Speed and Assetto Corsa. That's all I can say. Um, Automobilista 2, yeah, you have to have it, but oh, I'm sorry for putting you in seventh. Yeah, that's it, guys. That is the list. <laughs> um, let me know what you guys think in the in the comments section. Um, oh, you will have noticed. You will have noticed on this. I did miss. I have missed out uh, rally games. I have missed out rally games on the list. That's a separate thing. Uh, there's only like two rally games and three people that play them. I think rally is better than track racing. Myself personally, as, an, as a thing to do, I'm way I'm way more of a fan of rally driving. Uh, there's only like a couple of rally games you just own them just get all the rally games but I w we will do a separate video with listing them out but uh, yeah guys <laughs> are my justifications for that for that placement correct uh, let me know in the comments I'm sure there'll be a reasonable discussion about tyre models and why one sim is better than the other and why I'm totally wrong uh, that's that's what we're all about that's what sim racing is about it's not about driving sims it's about complaining about sims that's why I love it um, click the like button subscribe or don't subscribe. You can unsubscribe. Maybe this is the opportunity. But uh, until the next Game of Muscle video, thank you very much for watching. Happy tea drinking. And goodbye, everybody.